You're watching Plant Identification Through Personal Investigation with Angeline Whitmire. This plant portrait is for black cohosh, Actea racemosa. Two ways we tend to discover black cohosh in the summer are by the spires of white flowers rising above the plant's leaves, or the strong, unpleasant smell in the area, a smell which comes from the blooming flowers. Black cohosh, a perennial plant, grows in shady, wooded areas of eastern North America, north of Florida. Let's take a look at the inflorescence. Each plant sends up a single, tall stalk, which splits into several spires of flowers. Sometimes the weight of the flowers at the top of this single stalk causes it to bend over. Here's an example of a primary inflorescence with a secondary inflorescence branching off to the left. Further down the primary stalk and later in the season, another inflorescence arises from a leaf node. The flowers grow on their own little stalks or pedicels. They also bloom from the bottom of the inflorescence to the top. Therefore, this is called a raceme of flowers, or a racemose inflorescence. Black cohosh flower buds begin as small green balls with pedicels. Sometimes the inflorescence grows with a bend in it. The green flower buds turn white, starting from the bottom of each inflorescence. The flower buds are covered with white sepals. Sometimes the sepals turn brown, even before the flower opens. As the flower prepares to bloom, the sepals expand from the ball and create what looks like two cupped wings on either side of the bud. This image shows how the stamens are pushing on the sepals for release. Here we can see the anthers of the stamens by looking through the thin sepals. Some of the stamens are dropping from their protective covering. All the sepals pull back and drop off the flower. As the stamens are released, they lengthen. This inflorescence has flower buds, buds expanding with sepals dropping off, lengthening stamens, and flowers in bloom. The sepals have fallen from the flowers while the stamens have yet to lengthen and spread apart. There are no petals to a black cohosh flower. Although the black cohosh flower is usually white, sometimes the flower or buds will turn brown, probably due to not quite perfect weather or other environmental conditions. Continuing our study of the black cohosh flower, it looks like a starry burst of white. Each stamen has its thin filament topped by a knobby anther. With a very close look, or with a 10x lens, you may find white pollen on the white anthers. The center of the flower has one carpal, a botanical term for the female reproductive part. Carpal means a simple pistil formed from a modified leaf. This flower has two carpals, which is reportedly a rare occurrence for black cohosh. We can also see several sepals which have fallen from the flowers. The stigma at the top of the carpal is broad along one dimension. Frequently, stamens are broken off. Broken stamens are evident with these flowers. Here are more broken stamens. Perhaps the ants caused the breakage? Here's another pollinator. Bees also like black cohosh flowers and use sonication, the creation of sound wave vibrations, to dislodge pollen. Remember how one of the identifying characteristics of black cohosh in bloom is its unpleasant smell? Wildflowers and plant communities of the southern Appalachian Mountains and Piedmont declares, rubbing the fetid smelling flowers on skin repels biting bugs but may attract a few carrion flies and beetles looking for dead meat. While the topmost flowers are blooming, further down the raceme, the flowers are dying. Stamens turn brown and droop before detaching. After stamens drop off, what's left is the carpal on its pedicel. 
Notice the attachment point for the stamens, what now looks like a ring around the carpel. Again, some of the racemes have flower buds and blooms, while other racemes have a mix of dying flowers and developing follicles. Check out the bright green carpel with its few brown stamens, along with the other carpels with their darker rings. The darker rings are quite evident here. Each carpel is now a follicle, which is a botanical term for a plant's fruit composed of a single carpel and which opens along a single side. Notice how the pedicels are bending to change the alignment of the follicle. The follicles are closely lined up along the stalk, all pointing upward toward the tip. When mature, the follicles dry up and crack open to release their seeds. Walking in the woods during winter, you can find the stalks of black cohosh with the dried and split open follicles. When you know what the dried follicles look like, as well as the way that black cohosh stalks tower over the basal leaves during the summer, you can easily identify black cohosh during the winter season. Black cohosh roots are medicinal. The underside of the root mass shows the fibrous roots growing from the rhizome. The top of the rhizome has buds which become next year's plant. Careful foragers will replant one or more of these buds to propagate black cohosh. In the spring, black cohosh sends up a new stalk. This stalk with unopened leaves could easily be confused with blue cohosh, a plant with a similar looking spring stalk, one which grows several weeks earlier than black cohosh. The fleshy, sometimes red tinged, stalk is topped by a leaf cluster which splits into three clusters of green. Each stalked cluster splits again into at least three more sets of stalked leaves. This mature specimen of black cohosh shows the dividing into three with a subsequent subdivision of three leaves. This has been described as two to three times compound leaves, and stalked leaf usually divided into threes and further subdivided into threes. Here's a younger plant with its leaf divisions. The leaves open up. The leaflets of each compound leaf have irregularly toothed margins. The tips are pointed. Leaflet venation is pinnate, as the leaves and leaflets grow larger, we can see that some of the leaflets have maybe two lobes. The leaflet at the tip of the leaf frequently exhibits two deeper indentations and thus has three lobes. The green or red tinged stem of the initial black cohosh shoot soon develops its glaucous look. Glaucous means that there's a white or blue tint to the surface, which can be rubbed off. Notice the stalk at the point where it splits into three. This area is tinged with darker purple and has a knobby look to it. This smoothly glaucous stem contrasts with the stem portion of the flowering raceme, which is a fuzzy green. Let's look at some more black cohosh leaves. Here they are in the spring. As spring becomes summer, the leaves mature. Black cohosh has mostly basal leaves. The glaucous stem grows from the center of these basal leaves. These three images show the leaves and leaflets. Notice how the tipmost leaflet has three lobes. When the flower stalk or raceme begins to rise upwards, some leaves grow along that stalk. A new raceme may grow from the leaf node where these smaller leaves grow. When the basal leaves are fully developed, the flower stalk begins growing upward with its tiny, immature flower buds. Observe the smaller leaves growing along this flower stalk and how the raceme of flower buds emerges and continues rising. The primary raceme splits into three racemes. 
Since black cohosh is a perennial, it typically grows larger sets of leaves and flower stalks each year of its life. The overall plant's height with the flower spires is about four to five feet tall. It can grow up to eight feet tall. Young black cohosh plants grow about one and a half feet tall. You may even find a nice group of young black cohosh plants growing near each other in the shady woods. Summer leaves can develop dark spots trimmed with yellow. During the fall, leaves begin turning yellow. They may look variegated. until they turn completely yellow. Now for a quick review of black cohosh through one growing season. First, the rhizome sends up a new shoot with its single stalk splitting into three stalks. The lower leaf stalk is glaucous and the region where it splits into three stalks has a purple tinge. A single stalk rises from the center and splits into several racemes of flower buds. Flower buds open to reveal a tuft of stamens and a single carpel. The raceme of flowers develops from the bottom to the tip. Flower carpels become follicles with seeds. Follicles in winter are brown and split open. This is Angeline. Thank you for watching and learning about Actea racemosa, also known as black cohosh. Visit identifythatplant.com for more images of black cohosh for a blog post comparing black cohosh with false goat's beard, for plant identification resources, and for information about how you can confidently master the skill of correct plant identification.